It's usual to take the animal for a walk before you eat it. At the home of Emin Ramadan leaders, this family festival is accompanied by Indian music. And sheep are sacrificed this evening to bring the gypsies good luck. Emin Ramadan is a spokesman for the gypsies here, who want to be recognized in Yugoslavia as a national minority of Indian origin. This would give them the same rights and privileges as all other Yugoslav citizens. For that reason, they've re in favor of Rom, Rom or Romani being a tribal name of Indian origin. Emin is also choreographer of the state Romani dance troupe. On every street, costume and music recall the Indian past of the Romani people. This gypsy community is quite unlike the rest of Yugoslavian society. They've managed to preserve their own identity and Indian culture, even when it's frowned on by the state, like the public displays of Pelivani wrestling with oil. <laughs> different kind of struggle is presented by the local Romani drama troupe. Its director, Jules, is telling a history of the gypsies of East Europe. Words can be censored, but not grunts. Own their way through a symbolic play about how one oppressive dictator, meaning Hitler, was replaced by another oppressive dictator, played by the man in red. Our gypsy public loves to watch this kind of theatre. It's something very real to them, this retelling of their past with its depiction of their music, their happiness, their hopes and tragedies. They can't remain and they love to join in this retelling. The only means they ever have of knowing it is through such drama. So for them, it's the only way of learning their own history. Home, Duro explains to his children about the family history.
He describes how they've always been settled and how closely knit the community still is. No one marries a non- The communist government insisted gypsies give up their traveling way. Photos reflect life in this one fixed community. For these people, life's been a mixed blessing since the war. After the war, Stalin considered the time had come for a clash with Yugoslavia and prepared to use four different minority groups within Yugoslavia were united behind Tito and were determined to retain the independence of their country under Tito's socialist regime. This unity had been symbolized even by the gypsies who had fought alongside the partisans to free Yugoslavia from the Hitler tyranny. Many gypsies had perished in concentration camps, but now in the post-war years, a new chance came to them, as to all other citizens of Yugoslavia, to unify against the new tyranny of Stalin's Russia. In their modern school, they were instructed in the virtues of the socialist system by their non-gypsy headmaster. After the war with Germany, all Yugoslavian people got their freedom to build a new socialist Yugoslavia. Among them were the gypsies, who before that had no rights or freedoms in our country. Now, in our new socialist Yugoslavia, you gypsies can study, you can go to school, you can educate yourselves so that tomorrow, when you grow up, you can help build your new socialist country. But the truth about Romani life, we found less reassuring. After the war, most gypsies grew up without education and with enormous popular prejudice against them and the areas, a kind of squalor the authorities don't want publicized. Deprivation and unemployment remain very high. Earlier this century, East Europe's gypsies were mostly nomads. To make a living, they told fortunes and played music. Their tribal life had changed little since they'd left India, generations before. But in East Europe after the war, these nomads were seen as a threat to socialism. Gypsies were compelled to move on or settle down to fixed housing in selected areas. Some stayed, others went. They followed the Romani trail that had led their ancestors across East Europe from Yugoslavia, through Romania, and into Hungary. Sometimes this social integration has succeeded, though at a cost. Best, the capital of Hungary, Europe's best known gypsies can be found as professional entertainers. They're the most integrated of all Hungary's half million gypsies. Sandor Lakatos is Hungary's most famous professional, who works the hours fixed by his local union. Gypsies have a public and private side to their music, and this is gypsy music at its most public. In fact, it's Hungarian folk tunes, carefully tailored to meet the demands of its non-gypsy audience.
Over the years, professional restaurant performers gave up the gypsy life and language to become acceptable Hungarian citizens. In the state-controlled Raikó School of Music, children are still trained to become restaurant performers. Their gypsy teacher explains the tricks of the trade.